the bell icon to turn on notifications. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to set up a document approval workflow that's manually triggered. And I briefly mentioned to you that you can have either workflows that are triggered manually or automatically. And this is one of those subjects that I don't really want to do a huge deep dive on in this particular course, but I will very briefly show you how we can set up that same document approval process, but have it trigger automatically. So if we jump back to our SharePoint online document library, I want to set up this automated workflow so that every time a new document is created in the documents library, it triggers the approval workflow. So if I upload a new document or if I create a new document, that's going to trigger the approval process and emails are going to be sent out to approve the document. So let me show you how you can do this. We're going to jump back across to Power Automate. And if you remember, I'm currently clicked on my flows. Currently, I just have the flow that we created in the last lesson. So now what I want to do is I want to create a brand new flow. So using the menu on the left hand side, let's click on the create menu item. And this is basically going to show you three different ways that you can create a flow. You can start from a blank. You can start from a template, which is pretty much what we did last time, or you can start from a connector. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from a blank, which means I'm going to build my flow from scratch. And we have quite a few different options up here, but the one that we want is this first one, automated cloud flow. And this is a flow that is triggered by a designated event. And in our example, the designated event is going to be that a new file has been added to the document library. So let's click on automated cloud flow. The first thing I need to do here is give my flow a name. Now you can come up with something a little bit more explanatory than this. I'm just going to say document approval. And the first thing I need to do is choose my flows trigger. So the trigger is when I add a new file into the SharePoint document library. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to search through all of the triggers because there are so many of them for just the ones that are related to SharePoint. And I can then have a browse through and see which one matches what I want to do. So the very first one in this list says when a file is created in a folder. And that is exactly what I want to do. So let's select this as our trigger. Click the Create button at the bottom, and I can now establish the properties for this particular trigger. So it's asking me for the site address. Now, if I click the drop down, that's going to show me all of my current SharePoint sites. And it's this one here that we're working in, SharePoint Online Training. I then need to choose a folder. So which folder essentially is going to trigger this flow? Well, it's going to be when I add or create a new item in my documents folder. And this actually shows up as shared documents in this little list. So this is my trigger. So when I do add a new document, the next step is what do I want this flow to do? Well, let's click on new step. Well, the action to this trigger is going to be that I want it to start the approval process for this document. And because approvals are built into Microsoft 365, I can just search for approvals and it's going to show me all of the actions related to approvals. And there are just a few of them down here. So the first one here, start and wait for an approval. Now that's exactly what I want it to do. I want it to start off the approval process and then I want it to wait until the approver either approves the document or rejects the document. So let's select start and wait for an approval as our action to the trigger. Now I have some properties that I can complete for this. So my approval type, well, I want everybody that this gets sent out to, to have to approve it before that document is essentially properly approved. So let's select the first option from the list. I can now create a title for the approval. Now you can give it whatever title you like. I'm just going to say doc for approval to keep things simple. And then you can add in the email addresses of the people who need to approve this document. So again, because there's just me here, I'm going to assign this to myself. The other fields that we have here aren't mandatory. So I'm going to leave all of these blank and just click on save. So now I have my trigger in green and then my action. And I could carry on going, adding new steps to create more and more complex workflows. 
And as I said, we're not going to dive too much into this because we then tend to go off down the tangent into Power Automate. But this is quite a nice, simple example. I'm going to click on Save at the bottom to save that workflow. And now we're going to test it out. Now, what you'll notice is that in the top right hand corner of the screen, I actually have a little test button just here. So once you've created your workflow, let's click on test and you can choose if you want to test this manually by adding a file into the SharePoint folder or automatically. Now I'm going to test this manually and then right at the bottom, I'm going to say test. And you can see that I now have a message at the top that says to see it work now, add a file to the SharePoint folder you selected. So I'm going to jump back to my documents library and I'm going to create a little word document and just put it in here. So let's jump up to the new button and down to Word document and we'll just put some junk text in here. Hello world. I'm going to wait until the document says that it's saved, close it down. And I don't know if you saw in the bottom right hand corner, I got a notification from Teams letting me know that that approval has been kicked off. And what you'll also see now is that I have another notification from Outlook telling me that I've got a document to approve. So if I jump across to Outlook and take a look in my email, I can see, yes, there we go. That is that document and I can choose to approve or reject. So I'm going to approve this. Let's add some comments and submit that back. And that document has now been approved. Now, when I jump back into Power Automate, you can see here I now have a green tick next to the trigger and also the approval. So it's telling me that those have been run successfully. If I click back on my flows, there is my document approval flow. If I click this again, you can see that in the run history, it's telling me that it succeeded and I can take a look at the different steps by clicking on the date and it's going to take me back to this screen. And this flow currently because of the way I've set it up is going to run every time I add a new document into the document library. Now, just to finish off by showing you a, another short example of an automated workflow, well, this time we're going to turn our attention to social media. So maybe you are a content creator. Maybe you upload videos to YouTube all the time and something that most content creators do is when they upload a brand new video to their YouTube channel, they'll normally tweet about it as well and say, hey guys, come and check out my latest video. So in Power Automate, you could set up a workflow that says whenever you upload a new video to your YouTube channel, post a tweet that contains a link to the video. And you would do this in exactly the same way that we set up the document approval. We're going to jump back into the create button in the left hand menu and say automated cloud flow. Now the flow name, this time I'm going to call this one post a tweet and we need to choose the flows trigger. Well, the trigger for the tweet is going to be when I upload a video to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to type in YouTube to take a look at all of the YouTube related triggers. And I just have three of them. And the one I want is here when I upload a video. Let's select it and click on create. Now it's telling me that I don't need to add any additional information for this step. So, okay, great. Let's click on new step. So the trigger is the upload of a video to my channel. What is the action? Well, when I upload a video, I want Power Automate to tweet for me. So I'm going to type in Twitter and pull up all of the Twitter related actions. The one I want is here, post a tweet, and then I can choose the text that I want to be posted. So I might say, check out my new video and the media to be posted. Well, I want to post the video web link and click on save. And of course you can test this out by uploading a video to your channel and then checking your Twitter to make sure that it's posted. And if I click in my flows, there is that flow that I can use over and over again. So those are a couple of simple examples of automated workflows. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.